Anyway, I'm going to upload this right after I've done this. I am crashing people. I am like, I'm having to get into this writing of this notice of claim. I have somebody that's going to check it for me before I submit it, so that's good. It's just a matter of writing it, people. Writing it knowing that whoever I come across in terms of Andrew the Dragon and his friends, his lawyer friends in the Supreme Court of Canada, they're just going to cite, Oh, she's frivolous. She's scandalous. And she's just a huge waste of the court's time. Toss it out, Your Honor, because we're the corporation. And we don't do anything wrong. Even though it's been cited by Miss Chorney that she accuses us of being the massacres. And she's the one being massacred. <laughs> and her family. Knowing that, people, <laughs> is pretty freaking hard to sit down and put it in order and write it down. All right. And then correlate it with the evidence that you have. And that's the hard part. Taking that evidence and importing it into the notice of claim through the document list so that they can't hide the facts. Right? So, what happens though is I look at the evidence and I start getting teary-eyed. Right? One in part because no justice, no peace. I know what I'm up against in terms of the uh, white-collar criminal activity that's going on in British Columbia, Canada that's been going on for a long fucking time and it's well rooted and uh, the other part is you know I'm getting teary eyed because of the frustration just the frustration around having to deal with Amari and his constipation and you know I'm racking my brains on how to fix that problem right in terms of so his quality life is better and the people around him that care for him don't have to get all stressed out, getting worried and just, you know, but then on the other hand, I don't feel like, I really don't feel like, you know, people are working with me on that one in terms of like the, um, f the father side of the family, you know, the, the answers are too aloof. They're too, they're too nonchalant, you know, because they're not the ones having to deal with trying to get him to poo for seven hours right and then having to just go through that whole process with him they don't do that people they have their little visit and you know they feed him what they want to feed him and if we ask we get half ass answers back and you know if I come and I say well you know blah 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 it's just going to be a little snit party of some kind right because you know people can only hide their their true selves for so long, right? I mean, don't get me wrong, everything is kosher at this point, and I suppose they could say the same thing with me. But with me, you get to watch my videos and you pretty much know where I'm standing on things, right? And where I'm standing on things right now, people, is I gotta get up onto this paperwork with Shemay because now some of my tears, well, they have been related to frustration for quite a while, right? Because it just because I know what kind of court system I'm going into. Right, so you know, I'm trying to wire myself down, I guess you can say, even though my plate is full of you know multiple tasks to do in terms of the yard, and you know, I'm boiling up big pots of beef broth as a method to blah 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 blah, and you know, just whatever it is that I'm doing in a day, so. But with this video, I'm just going to add in a couple of pictures of Shimei. Just as a reminder that this is what I'm up against, people. In terms of, <clears throat> you know, I try and do these videos and 
you know, sometimes I'm off my rocker in terms of, like, you know, my rant, I guess you can say. But it, in essence, you, you know, you, you can label them to be a rant, but th they are reality to the world around us because it's not just happening to me. I was just the one that noticed it and just happened to be outspoken about it. It's been happening. It is happening. It has happened. And it will continue to happen until eventually more people get injured by our public union sector to the point where the public union sector just won't be able to hide it anymore. And that's why I'm going to insert uh, pictures of Shimei, which if you've been watching my videos, you would have seen them. But if you haven't been watching my videos and you've just come on board and you haven't found those videos were pictures of Shimei and what Fraser Health Authority did to her body. If you haven't seen them, you're going to see, the, see them here because this is a reminder of no matter how I'm feeling or what I'm up against or what I'm doing, I have to take my energy and start focusing it on this and put it in a nice, neat, envelope right and take it to court regardless of what they're going to say in terms of oh she's frivolous oh she's scandalous oh she's a waste of the court's time now let's just charge her a hundred thousand dollars for our time as we accuse her of being all these things but don't give her an opportunity to defend herself your honor Right? It's pretty hard sitting down writing something knowing that you're defeated even before you start. And I'm kind of feeling that way, but I'm also starting to feel frustrated because I've been doing a whole lot of talking and not enough of that. Right? So before I get too deep into these videos around Amari and his <clears throat> food substances <clears throat> and whatnot and whatnot and, you know, the, the garden, I just want to... You know, I'm trying so hard just to bring my mind to what needs to be done, right? No, no, regardless of what the outcome is going to be or what people perceive the outcome to be, it's something that needs to be done. And the only person who can do that at this point is me. So, you know, my computer is off, but I found a reason to turn it back on because the computer for me is an escape in some ways, in terms of, oh, well, let's watch this, and, oh, let's see where the gossip is on that, and, oh, here's a nice little news article I can make a comment on. Do you get it, right? You know, it's very easy just to distract away and focus on other people's problems when, in fact, you should be focusing on your own. Well, that's what I'm going to be trying to do. I'm going to try and focus on my own problems in, in regards to the um, notice of claim, right? against Fraser Health Authority and the provincial government of British Columbia, Canada. Because without the provincial government, there's going to be no justice, people. Fraser Health Authority will play the same dirty tricks that they played with Uncle John. They're going to partner up with the same dirty judges like they did with Uncle John, right? As CIBC Bank is still lurking and hovering around in the background, you know, right? <laughs> I can't, I can't be afraid to face that. I don't know what the hell I'm going into, people. Maybe that's part of my problem. Maybe I just don't want to deal with those fucking devils anymore because I don't see them as normal human beings. I really don't, right? I don't know where they get the audacity to sit up there and say that they serve the public when, in fact, they prey upon the public, right? And I just don't understand why I have to be the one to go into that. You know, it's like going, it's like, it's like going into a little tunnel that's very wide, like very narrow. It's very narrow, you know, as you're being poked at, which I've been in that tunnel for a long freaking time. And then when you start coming out of that tunnel, then when you start coming out of that tunnel, it starts to open up, right? And when it starts to open up, you know, that's a big ass freaking cavern that you're in now with a bunch of fucking devils you know it's hard to go down that road people but I have to I have to so I gotta refrain from you know 
I don't know, refrain from, I gotta, I gotta balance my time better. I gotta, I gotta not be so easily distracted with what's going on on, on the Mexican and U.S. border in terms of, oh my God, you know, what about the Canadian and U.S. border, you know what I mean? Sure, it affects me, but not, not what it has, how it's happened with Shemaine. And don't forget, there's that young man that died too, needlessly died, seriously. If the cops would have done their job with Shimei, that young man would be alive today. And like, I'm thinking about that young man today, and I'm thinking about Shimei, and I'm thinking about the both of them being in the house, and, you know, I'm thinking about how vulnerable they both were, and, you know, I'm just thinking, thinking, and I'm thinking, but yet they're both dead. You know, what's, what's, the, what's the coincidence of that happening, unless unless it's a wake-up call. A wake-up call that the cops refuse to smell the coffee, man. Seriously, seriously. And they're never going to be held account to account, people, in terms of their negligence and on how they dealt with Shemaine and how the coroner uh, is negligent in, in how that department dealt with Shemay, how with Fraser Health Authority was negligent in how they dealt with Shemay. Because if those people would have been doing their jobs correctly, that young man would be alive today. Mm -hmm. He'd be alive today, people. You don't have two young people in your house and not even two years later, they're dead, both of them. There's a reason for it. And that's the point of this video. There's a reason for it. And that's why I have to write this stuff down. Because not only am I now advocating for Shimei, but I'm also advocating for that young man. And I don't care what my uh, more current YouTube stalkers think or say, because everybody has their own truth. You have your truth. I have my truth. For my truth, you weren't here. You didn't see what was going on. You weren't a part of it. Right? You have no fucking clue other than what's being told to you by somebody else that's got something to hide. And for that, you want to be in denial. Right? Unless, of course, maybe you're a part of it and you just don't want to get caught yourself. Because there is that possibility. Right? That hasn't been ruled out yet. In regards to... Shemay's dead. Shemay's in the hospital. She's not coming back. Give me my son. Oh, well, sorry. She's not dead. She's just in the hospital. Give me my son. I want my son now. Yeah, well, we know why you want your son. Don't we? Because you knew Shemay was dead. And that's the point. You knew and you made sure Shimei was dead. And that's the point. And the cops knew that Shimei was dead. But there's a bigger agenda going on in the province of British Columbia, Canada. And that's called illegal organ harvesting under the guise of legal organ harvesting. For every one that they take out organs from a fentanyl-related death, right? They're taking, the, that, and that's being done legally through the organ donation center, for every one, there's the other one, like Shimei, that's having her organs taken out, taken out illegally. Okay? And for that, another young person is dead with no justice and no peace. Okay, so now it is the uh, 1st of June. What I did is I took everything out of here and I put all that in there. So we've got our rich chicken here. These things, I just put bone with a question mark, okay, because I just made that. Remember what I said? I want to be able to eat this up within a month or so, you know, maybe two months, stretch it out throughout different meals. Obviously, I'm going to eat, right? And Andre can eat, whatever. The point is, is that... 
this is what Amari can now have regularly without me having to put full chickens and all those things into the roasting pan and cook them in the oven, right? And then have to deal with it that way. Because when I'm out in the yard, people, it's summertime coming, got a lot of house repairs to do. There's a lot of things that need to be done in the yard to get done this year. This is the most efficient way, and this is where I'm... You, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Alrighty, so now it is June 2nd, 2019. Obviously in War Room 2. <clears throat> Can you see? This is mild <laughs> compared to other things being piled up on this table. So anyway, trying to wrap my head around taxes right now, people. And I have to do the non-profit taxes coming up pretty soon. I don't know. Hold on. Okay. So, moving along, uh, I, I'm not doing taxes. I am racking my brains on how to work on Amari's diet, people. Beef bone broth is very good. Chicken broth, too. But bone broth, bone broth is very good. This is the one with the marrow in it. Can you see that? So I think I'm going to do the marrows in a separate pot just to see what we get because these ones I'm going to stew in that pot and here's some beef with just bones. This was kind of expensive. The beef itself was $10.00. If you notice, it says Hala beef, meat with bone. I looked up Hala. Apparently, it has to do with Arabic and Islam, Muslims, with the way they slaughter their animals in terms of going into the juggler vein and bleeding them out as they're saying, give grace to God, right, for providing this food. So, I noticed through several of the stores in Surrey, it's always saying halal meat. I always thought it had something to do with Punjabis, but apparently not. They're catering to the Muslim, uh, Muslim community. So, that this animal wasn't stunned before it was killed for slaughter. It was, they take a knife and they go into the jugular vein and they bleed them out that way. That makes me think of Shimei, people. But besides that point, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw those anyway into that pot. And I bought some fresh tarragon. I'll show you. I'm going to cook these up in a separate pot because as I was going through the internet, searching out all this information, there is a difference between the two in terms of quite possibly how the body digests. Right? This one is better. But I'm going to be drinking this daily. I'm giving Amari... Um, broth every day. I'm bringing in mitzo soups and that type of thing. So hold on. Okay, so I guess this is just another video about more beef bones. <laughs> so as you can see, I separated the two, right? This is the one with the marrow, which is better in terms of nutrients, right? It's right in there. This one is just what I cooked last time, but it was really, really good. So, anyway, I'm going to do that, and then what you do is you put, if you don't know how, you put your bones in, if you want to mix them together. I'm trying to get the best combination here for Amari in terms of the most digestible food, because you have to remember, people, Amari doesn't move, so his, his muscles aren't developing the way they should, and if he's not, you know, it's hard to feed him because of the constipation, and... You know, and, and just blah blah blah. So I'm again. I'm working on a diet here. I'm really taking it very serious about what I'm trying to do. So what I'm going to do now is because in order to get that um, gelatin, you need meat, right? So this here is that halal beef. I ran my hands through it. As far as I know, I got out all the bones, right? But as this cooks, you might get little slivers, so at some point, I'm going to have to strain this, although the majority of the bones are going to be in here. 
So what we're going to do, and because it's got the gristle in here, you can see little bits of fat, whatever. I am just going to throw that uh, into this pot as is, because I'm trying to enrich this. I don't want just m m marrow broth. I want really rich beef broth with the most nutrients involved in terms of, well, marrow is one, because the marrow bones were much more expensive than these bones, but these bones were on sale. And then that's the other part of the marrow, I'm sorry, that's the other part of the hollow beef, right? So this one here, I'm just going to take, and, you know, it's got different kind of bones, right? And so anyway, I'm just going to stick it in there. I'm going to, br now, bring it up. See, I cut off that one little teeny weeny bone off that piece of meat. I'm going to throw it in there because I'm not going to forget to uh, strain that, right, this time. And at some point, I will probably strain this too. So anyway, this stuff is going to cook now for a day or two, right? The longer you cook it, the better it is. Now, I'm not going to boil it. I'm going to just bring it up so that the uh, old blood, everything, the scum there, comes to the surface. I'm just going to skim it off, and then I'm going to put salt in there, and I'm going to just stew it. And then also the tarragon, because the tarragon just makes it taste so good. Hold on. Okay, so just a quick rundown here. I've never had to stop and think about it before, people. I mean, I've made lots and lots of stock and broth and all that crap in my time, trust me. But here I'm trying to refine and fine-tune and make it specialized more so for Amari. I mean, obviously, I'm going to drink a cup every day and I'm going to get into more noodles and so that Andre drinks it and, you know, because it does, it, it makes your nails grow, it helps, you know, the cartilage in your body, it helps your skin, it helps to build muscles, it helps to, you know, fight and bacteria and all that crap it like builds up your immune system right that's what I'm trying to say but because I'm dealing with that constipation part you know I as I went through I, I, I typed out like a whole bunch of shit I'm gonna make a whole binder just around Amari and food needs right in terms of um, um, building in a diet people that's what I'm trying to do here right and, uh, you know, I'm trying to be creative about it, and I'm trying to be tasty about it, and I'm trying to, you know, make sure he gets the right kind of nutrients. I said to my son, I'm going to start giving him more liquids in terms of soups and mitzo soup and, like, beef broth and, like, just straight-up beef broth. He's going to get a bottle of straight-up beef broth, people, just so that he gets those nutrients, right? And, you know, I and I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to go see the doctor next week, right, or sometime soon, like, in the next few days or whatever it is, and we're going to wait him because in my reading and through my travels in terms of regarding to constipation you know you need x amount there you know for body weight as an adult you know if you weigh this much you should have this many ounces of water in a day to help with that digestion process right and milk can be constipating so you know is it the milk that's constipating him or you know like his grandmother on the father's side gave him uh, noodles the other day yes, on Saturday she gave him noodles right yesterday yesterday she gave him noodles and I'm like because I asked him I asked her I said well, what did you feed him oh I gave him some cereal with some berries and I'm like okay well what kind of cereal oh well it was an oat and it had little berries and I put berries in it and I'm like okay well anything else oh well uh, yeah um you know he had some something uh, with pasta and I'm pasta I said oh how much pasta <laughs> you know that's like oh how much pasta right because you know he gets constipated right people so she said oh no just a little bit but she doesn't tell me what a little bit is so anyway and and then also too if you know for people that struggle with this as adults I suppose right 
Um, I'm not going to rush with these videos, people. Like, I'm panicking. I'm having freaking panic attacks because I'm supposed to be in the yard and I'm not getting very much yard time in because my life has completely slowed down with Amari. Everything takes so much longer to do now, right? And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I have to spend time with him, sometimes to get him to poo. You know, it's like a seven-hour affair, people, from 9 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm still trying to help him to poo. So there goes a whole day. By the time you're done, you're shot because, you know, he's halfway through it. He's screaming. He's crying. He's fussing. And, you know, you're trying to, like, bite bite your tongue and you can't get mad at him. It's not his fault. And you got to talk him through it. And, like, there's got to be a better way, right? And, and, and anytime you go to a pharmacy and you ask them, oh, well, you know, what's, I need something for, for, uh, what do you call, for, you know, the baby with constipation. And they're saying, well, you're not really supposed to be using this. And, you know, you need to get it from the doctor. And I'm like, well, the doctor said, and, well, that's not the kind that the doctor has written down. We don't have it. And we go to a nothing when we don't have it and it's like fuck man so anyway okay so i'm having panic attacks but i'm i'm breathing through it right i told tisha you want me to do these taxes you know you need to go somewhere else with the kids so that i can just have peace and quiet you know i in the old days i'd work you know big flare-up, Joan would start a fight with Sierra, and or whatever, and I'd have to go downstairs, and before you know it's a big fucking screaming match, and I'm telling John to get out with his wife, and, you know, and don't expect me to come chase you, and all this other shit, right, you know, like, kids start fucking fighting, and, you know, and then I'd come back up, and I'd work on the books, well, you know, in those days, I was it was able to do it, nowadays, it's just, I'm too tired, man, I'm just, like, I, it's hard for me to wrap my head around numbers, and all this shit, and I've got to get in with the non-profit books, because I've told this board director, I don't want to do non-profit books anymore, I can't do them anymore, but you know what, I'm, I'm going to do them, I'm going to try and do them over the next six months, an hour here, an hour here, after I'm done these ones, as I continue to work on all this lawsuit paperwork, right, blah, 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 as I'm having to slow down my life in general to, you know, I, I talk to Amari, I hold Amari, I feed Amari, I give him bottles, you know, I feed him, I change him, you know, I just everything, people, right? So anyway, you know, I, I, I do the research, you know, I can sit here for hours and hours and hours, I'm printing out stuff, I'm reading, 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 so... <coughs> In a nutshell, I just pulled up a little thing here, right? In a nutshell, joint and knuckle bones offer lots of gelatin. Now, I came across an article uh, where I don't know if gelatin is good for constipation. <laughs> to some degree, it is, and to some degrees, maybe not, right? <clears throat> so it is ideal to include at least some of these in your bone broth. Right now, I'm just boiling them separately. One, just to see if there's a different taste. Two, just to see what how it rises on the surface in terms of fats. Obviously, there's not going to be much fat in the marrow one. It will be the marrow, right? The fat will come in with the um, knuckle bones, I would think, because there's probably more fat on them. Anyway, and, and then it, it, it suggests feet, e.g. chicken feet and pork trotters, offer the most gelatin, right? So, of course, I'm now going to go start doing a separate Google search. I have lots of medical books in the house. I can go through them when I have time, but right now I don't have time. So I'm just Googling, right? With gelatin and constipation to see if if it's a problem, right? In terms of how much gelatin. You know, it's one thing giving them beef broth, but maybe there's too much gelatin in there because I should be using more marrow bones versus knuckle bones. Do you see where I'm going with this, people? Although I'm going to end up probably combining them together at some point. I just want to separate them for now just to see because I've never I'd, I've never had to do this, people. I just threw the bones in the pot, cooked them up, strained them, made my, whatever I was going to make and moved on, right? Now I'm, I'm having to, it's like rearrange my life, reset my life, start all over again. That's what's happening here. 
So they say chicken feet and pork tartars offer the most gelatin of all and are very cheap. Adding a few feet to your broth will most guarantee a good outcome. There is no better indicator of success than a nicely gelled broth. Note, during processing, most feet are soaked and bleached for health and safety reasons. Therefore, it's imperative. I don't cook with chicken feet, but... Anyway, this is what they say. Therefore, it's imperative that you boil them in a separate pot of water first. Discard the water, then add the feet to your broth pot. Something to keep in mind. Now, I just went off to the grocery store, and I just bought a whole bunch of fresh bones. You've seen that meat that I bought, that halla meat. That I spent like, oh my God, what was it? Fifty-five dollars? So I got enough bones. I don't have any more beef, but I've got beef around in my freezers, right? I just wanted to cut to the chase today. So I spent like $55 just on basically beef bones and one thing of beef that's in two separate pots right now. And then after that beef cooks, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to chop it up real fine. And I'm going to see if I can maybe make a pate with it or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm not worried about it right now. <coughs> and then, in terms of... Uh, Amari's on the couch and now he's starting to fuss. He probably wants to go on the floor. Uh, marrow, for example. Marrow bones provide immune, boost immune boosting fats that support fertility, growth, and development in children. And act as a potent healer for the sick. So, um, the only thing that might happen to me if I drink beef broth every day is my, my skin will probably get uh, smoother. And I already have soft skin. But I'm getting older, so I'm getting wrinkles now, right? You can see it. And plus, when I'm out in the sun, you know you know what the sun does to the skin, right? And I don't wear sunscreen because I don't like being all greasy and stuff, right? So, anyway, um, in terms of Amari, you know, it's, it's, it's building his... It's helping to keep his muscles healthy, right? Because, you know, when children don't move, their muscle tones change and stuff like that. So I am trying to, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to prevent future illness, people, right? I'm trying so hard. So, okay, so now we know what we're going to do with that, right? And, uh, I'm also going to do this. Do you see? Guess what's in there? I ordered them off of Facebook. It cost me uh, $21. $10 for the books. And then I had to pay for the, uh, what do you call it? I had to pay for the uh, postage, which was $12. So 22 bucks. Right? <coughs> And what it is, because again, you know, I'm bringing in that diet. Um, I am going to start cooking more with coconut. Because coconut is another superfood that, uh, you know, is apparently easy to digest. And these books specifically talk about coconut. <laughs> coconut oil. Miracle. Do you see? So, this one has 50 delicious recipes. Oh, and then this one is 400 recipes. Use natural, lose weight, don't want to lose weight, prevent heart disease. We don't want Amari getting heart disease. Right? We don't want him getting cancer. We don't want him getting diabetes. And we want to strengthen his immune system. Right? Yeah. So, anyway, I'll take the time to read all this. This is a lot of just general information. As time goes by, I'll explain it to you what I'm learning. And then it gives you some recipes in there. Right? So, you know, I don't like to Google all the time. I like this. So, curry cream with cauliflower soup. Mmm, 
That sounds good. Cream of cauliflower soup with coconut. This is all with coconut stuff in it, right? Shrimp oils and, you know, and sesame seed, sesame chicken salad. And I guess it's, everything in here has got coconut of some kind. So that's another thing that I'm going to be bringing into his diet. And then I'm like, well, gee, poor little kid, you know, he doesn't get a lot of sweet stuff outside of juice, right? What can, you know, that's boring, you know. So what can you do for him, right? And I'm like, well, <clears throat> you know, what's another high... Let me go turn this down. Hold on a minute, people. <coughs> I'm not trying to bring it to a boil, right? Um, I'm doing those bones. Um, you know, I'm like, well, what, what can you do, right? Like, you know, I have to get into a routine, people. My life is slowing down with a routine. Right? A daily, a daily routine with tremendous amount of responsibilities on the outside in terms of the yard, you know, the house in general of cleaning and dusting and wiping things down and all the other crap and Andre and, you know, just, just whatever, right? Okay, so what's, what's another good staple? staple in terms of like something like sweet right you know something good and well you know pudding pudding people pudding so you know you can make tapioca pudding you can make coconut yogurt apparently um you can make i think coconut pudding um i want to make chocolate pudding because cocoa powder coca coca powder when i did food security i bought a whole several several cans right <clears throat> and I'm going to start stocking up on it again because it's very, very high in minerals, people. Very high in minerals. Just like the, 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 the b b bones are. High in minerals, right? So, um, like potassium and magnesium and all these things that Amari needs, right? And it needs to be given to him in such a way that it's easy to digest. So through my reading, you know, give smaller portions throughout the day. I think maybe that's what we're doing wrong here, you know, because he likes to eat. So we're just, when we feed him, you know, we give him a, well, especially Tisha. Tisha's bad for it. I tell her, Tisha, Tisha, you're giving him too much at one time. Oh, but he's eating it. I said, yeah, I know, but it's too much for his gut, right? Because she gives him a full bowl <laughs> where, you know, it's better if we just give him you know, smaller portions. I don't know what those portions are going to be yet, people. But every two, three hours. Right? And you mix them up. So that, you know, he gets a little bit of everything, basically, throughout the day within that food guide. <laughs> Only it's got to be tailored to his ability to, one, chew it. Two, to digest it. And three, to pass it. Right? With ease. With ease. That's that's the thing. So I'm I'm again uh, this is like another attempt of me trying to um fill in that vacuum because it's a big vacuum right now, right? It's a hit and miss. And you know, once I get it more scheduled down and I'm gonna write it down what I'm doing in a day, and then I'm when Andre, when Amari gets passed over to the grandmother on the father's side, I am going to show her the list of how I'm feeding him throughout the day. And I'm going to add her, add, ask her to fill in the gap of what she's feeding him so that we can keep track to figure out how to uh, prevent the constipation because it only takes one meal to constipate them. Just one. That's all. That's all it takes, people. So. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I started off in the war room with taxes. But, you know, it hasn't happened yet. So I'll be back. Hold on. Okay, so now it's the next day. 8.30 in the morning. Alright. Let's see what's going on. 
that's the marrow. Right. I've been adjusting the temperature. This one is the uh, knuckle bones. Good. Hold on a minute. 